I'm Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo, and in this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to create applications that can connect to just about any serial device. I'm going to assume that you've gone through the Zojo desktop quick start and tutorial, and thus have a basic understanding of how to navigate around a simple project, get to the inspector, the library, the code editor, etc. If you haven't gone through the Zojo desktop quick start and tutorial, I advise you to do that first. To communicate with a serial device, it's going to need to be an RS-232 device. Specifically, that means it needs to have a connector like this one. Now, computers no longer have RS-232 ports, so you'll need to have an RS-232 to USB adapter like this one. For the purposes of this video, I'm using a Motorola LS-2208 barcode scanner, but you can connect to any serial device. This particular barcode scanner, I'm told, is the most popular one made today. To purchase one, use the link in the description below the video. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is make a new project. And I'm going to drag out a label control. And I'm going to title this Serial Devices. Next, I'm going to get a pop up menu, which will list all the devices. Place that there. Resize it a bit. And I'm going to name this Devices Pop up Menu. So I'll go to the inspector to do that. Here we go. Ideally, this pop-up menu will automatically update to show devices that have been added or removed. When you plug in your device, you'll want it to appear in this menu and disappear when you unplug it. To do that, you'll need a timer control that will periodically update the device's pop-up menu control. So let's go get one. We'll place it on the layout. And let's give it a name. We'll call it Device List Updater and we'll set the period to 500 so that it updates every half second. Now we're gonna add code to the timer's action event to update the pop-up menu. This code first gets the count of the number of rows in the device's pop-up menu. It then compares that to the number of serial devices connected to the computer. And if they're not the same, it knows that either a new device has been connected or an existing device has been disconnected. In either case, it removes all the rows from the pop-up menu, then loops through the serial devices, adding the names of each connected device to the pop-up menu. Finally, it checks to see if the number of serial devices is less than the number of rows the device's pop-up menu previously had. If that's the case, a device was removed, so the code selects the first row, row zero, from the list of serial devices. If not, then the device has been added, and it makes sense that the user would want that device selected, so the code selects the very last row in the device's pop-up menu. Okay, so I'm gonna run my project now. There it is. And I'm on Mac OS, so there's a built-in Bluetooth. It's already on the menu. And I'm gonna plug in my scanner. There it is, so now the menu shows it. Now I'll unplug my scanner, and it's gone. So the timer control is working as expected. You might have noticed that in the pop-up menu, my serial device was labeled USB serial and what appears to be an ID number. Well, that's exactly what that is. It's coming from the adapter. So if I had two different serial devices, I'd have two different adapters, and each would have its own unique ID. Now I'm going to add the control that will actually communicate with my serial device. That's called a serial connection control. I'm going to find it here in the library. It looks like a little USB plug. I'm going to drag that to the layout. Now it's not a visual control, so it shows up in the tray. Next I need to set its baud rate to 9600, because that's the speed at which my serial uh, device expects to communicate, my barcode scanner specifically. Next. I'm going to add a button to the layout that the user will use to connect. Now you could choose to make it such that the pop-up menu connects automatically when the user chooses a device, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put the code in the button itself just to keep it nicely separated. I'm going to call it connect button, and I'm going to change the caption to connect. And then since there won't be a connection initially, I'm going to disable it. Next, we're going to use the change event of the device's pop-up menu 
to disable the connect button if no row is selected and enable it if there is one selected. We do this by looking at the selected row index property of the pop-up menu. If it's negative one, that means no row is selected, so we'll disable the connect button. Otherwise, we'll enable it. Now we're gonna use the connect button's action event to add some code to actually connect to the serial device. This button will change to disconnect once a connection is made. When the user clicks the button, if the caption is disconnect, we will close the connection to the serial device, change the caption back to connect, enable the pop-up menu, and tell the device list updater timer to start firing again to update the menu. Otherwise, the user wants to connect, so we will set the serial connection to the number of the rows selected in the pop-up menu, then we'll try to connect to the device. At that point, we'll set the caption of the button to disconnect, disable the pop-up menu, turn off the device list updater timer, but if the connection fails, an exception will occur and the user will see a message to that effect. Now I need something to put the data in once it comes in, so I'm going to go to the library and get a text area. I'm going to drag that to the layout and position it, make it fill the area. And since I don't want the user actually editing this data because it's coming from the serial device, I'm going to go to the inspector and I'm going to set the read-only property so they can just read the data but can't edit it. Out of the box, the Motorola LS2208 barcode scanner provides a value with no terminating character. That means you have to keep reading from the serial connection until you no longer get any data. Now this complicates things a bit. If your device works this way, you can add a timer that keeps checking the length of the incoming data, and when it sees it hasn't changed, it assumes the full value has been received. Fortunately, the LS2208 can be programmed to append a carriage return and a line feed to the end of the value. If you have one or you bought one to experiment with, take a look at the quick start guide that came with it. You'll see a section titled add an enter key with three barcodes. Just scan those three in order and your scanner will be programmed to append a carriage return and a line feed to the end of the value. The serial connections data received event will fire when data comes in from the device. This code uses the serial connections look ahead method to read the ASCII data coming in from the barcode scanner. It then uses index of to look for the end of line character, which is a carriage return and a line feed, conveniently enough. And if it finds it, it uses read all to read the data and append it to the text area. Next, I'm going to add the error event to the serial connection, which fires when an error occurs. And the code here is pretty simple. It's just going to beep and then display a message box. that says an error occurred while reading data. All right, so now I'm ready to run the app. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run. There's the app. Great. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my barcode scanner. Get this plugged in. There it is. Now I'll click Connect to connect to it. And now let me try to scan a few things I've got here. Okay, so in this app, we spent most of our time writing code to deal with the user interface. The actual code to read data from the uh, serial device was only a handful of lines long. But you can see that it's actually really easy to build applications in Zojo that talk to serial devices. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you'd like to learn more, visit Zojo.com. Thanks.